So, welcome to the part 2 of the solute transfer uh, modeling. Uh, this uh, lesson will be on a micro scale modeling of the solute transfer and to visualize that uh, in the weldment I am just drawing you a schematic here. So, this is a melt pool and this is a work piece and I am taking a longitudinal section and as we have seen earlier longitudinal section will have the torch velocity in it and the torch is moving in this direction. So, you have the melt pool shape like this slightly trailing effect will be there because of the motion of the torch and in the front side is where the melting is happening and on the back side is where is the solidification is happening and it is the micro scale or micro segregation that is happening at the solidification side that we are going to now uh, try to understand and the domain is not the work piece itself, but a small box that I have shown you here. This box can be replicated at every location on the back side to cover the entire solidified weld and therefore, it is representative and I have oriented the box in the direction of the maximum temperature gradient. The reason being that the solidification is always taking place anti parallel to the maximum temperature gradient and therefore, the heat were to go this way then the solidification is going in the anti parallel direction. So, therefore, I have drawn the box along the maximum temperature gradient direction. So, now you can see that I have drawn a box. So, from now on our domain is basically a small box which we take it is as one dimensional and uh, whatever is happening within this box can be deemed as applicable within the fusion zone and these boxes are aligned and uh, stacked to complete the entire fusion weld behind the torch. Okay. So, we will take uh, two cases uh, in this lesson. The first case is a complete mixing okay. and that uh, can be discussed as follows. Okay. So, before go, we go there we can actually just look at the velocity of solidification what we are going to use that is basically related to the angle that the interface between the melt pool and the work piece namely the fusion zone is going to make with the horizontal and uh, that angle theta can be used to relate V s with V torch. Okay. So, at a later point when we come across what is the velocity here we should not confuse it with the torch velocity it is related to torch velocity, but not the same and uh, it is not also uh, to be confused with the velocity of the liquid pool within the uh, zone here. Uh, it is actually the velocity with which solidification is happening and you can see that uh, very close to the top it, it will approach the torch velocity, but at the bottom it is 0. So, somewhere in between it will take a trigonometric function like cos theta to change from 0 to 1 uh, and uh, you could actually determine at any location using this angle. Okay. So, we will keep that in mind when we need that value. So, so complete mixing uh, uh, assumption is as follows. What we mean by that is uh, within the region fully mixed liquid we have and uh, also fully mixed solid. This is not uh, this is not generally uh, followed uh, the reason being that normally the solute uh, uh, diffusivity in the solid region is about 2 or 3 orders of magnitude smaller than that in the liquid and therefore, generally it is not possible to have well mixed here in both. However, we can actually take this assumption and uh, proceed to do an analysis because it is applicable for small dimensions. So, whenever the uh, length scales are very small this can be taken as applicable. So, we will look at those assumptions. What we mean by full mixed liquid and fully mixed solid is as follows. There are no gradients. Okay, the solute concentration does not have any gradients if it is full mixed. Okay. And uh, to go further we will just also uh, make the phase diagram for this alloy for which we are doing this uh, analysis. So, that we can refer to the compositions and uh, we will take a simple you know, dilute alloy uh, to make this analysis uh, easier. So, this is the phase diagram and uh, okay, let us take the alloy which we are going to discuss as this and the alloy composition starting alloy composition is C naught and uh, this temperature is the liquidus temperature, this is the solidus temperature and we can say that the alloy C naught is going to start solidifying when the temperature starts going below T L and it will complete solidification when it reaches T S and which means that the solid fraction is going to start from 0 at T L 
and it will be equal to 1 at T s. Okay. So, that is the meaning of this and if this was C naught then we would introduce what is called a partition coefficient. Partition coefficient is nothing but the ratio of the solid to the liquid compositions. So, C s by C l is the partition coefficient k. So, as we have seen uh, in the previous lesson partition coefficient for example, in the case of aluminum copper alloys is about 0.14. Okay. So, you could think of uh, uh, that uh, as a value which says that if it is very different from 1 then the solid and liquid are having very different compositions and if it is very close to 1 that means solid and liquid have very close close by compositions there is not much of the separation of the solute that is happening. Okay. And this also means that you could now uh, find out what would the value of uh, this composition here what is the first solid that will be coming out and that can be found out from the same relationship if the liquid composition is C naught the first solid composition will be C naught K, K C naught and what will be the liquid composition of the last to solidify liquid that is by the time it comes to the end the solid is having a composition of C naught. So, the liquid should then be C naught by C L is equal to K. So, C L is C naught by K. Okay. So, which means that I would just summarize first solid to form from a liquid of composition C naught is K C naught and last liquid to solidify is having a composition of C naught by K okay, as you have seen from the phase diagram. Okay. So, these uh, values are necessary and uh, at this point what would be the F s the fraction of solid? F s is actually 0 when you are starting to solidify and here F s is 1 when you are finishing the solidification. So, these are written here because they will help us in uh, writing the uh, limit. Okay, so, we will now do the analysis by looking at the solidification of one box subject to the condition that it is fully mixed. Okay. So, let us just draw how the solid profile is going to look like. Hmm. So, initially this is a box and uh, here I am putting the composition and here is the distance. And the distance can be approximated to the fraction of uh, solid also because uh, this is entire thing is initially liquid. So, therefore, uh, the position of the interface will tell you what is the fraction of the solid. Okay. So, let us say this liquid has a composition of C naught then the very first um, point when you are not yet solidified the composition profile is going to look like that. Okay. This is C naught it is going to look flat because everywhere the liquid is of the same composition and uh, the moment a small amount let us say 5 percent of the liquid has solidified that 5 percent is going to have a composition of K C naught and K being 0.14 for uh, aluminum copper it means it is going to be a small value here and this much of solute has to then mix in the liquid. So, the solute when it is mixed will have the composition of the liquid going up. So, this will be the profile of composition after some amount of let us say 5 percent of solidification has happened. The profile is not flat fully it is two steps one step here and then another here showing you a slight increase because this much of solute has to be dumped across the entire width of the box. And if you then solidify another 5 percent then what happens is that it would dump some more. Okay. And uh, so, if I another 5 percent then and it can keep going like that. Okay. And uh, what happens is that when we are assuming that this region is fully mixed it means that within the solid these kind of steps are not allowed they are fully mixed. So, therefore, we would just draw them all the way to the end. Okay. So, every time the composition in the solid is adjusting and this much of solute in this uh, box let us say this box 
is distributed on the other end okay so that it can be balanced okay so now uh, to understand how the um, composition is going to vary when the solidification is going we pose the problem as follows okay what is the problem the problem is basically determine cs composition of the solid as a function of fs okay and you can actually pose it as uh, determine the composition of the liquid as a function of the liquid fraction whichever way because uh, both are related and we can then use this plot to determine that. So, what we do is that to determine we go from uh, comparing situation at f s to f s plus d f s which means that um, let us say from 20 to 21 percent that kind of a small variation in the solid and let us look at what will happen. So, I would just take two sets of lines and I would exaggerate the d f s so that it is visible in the board and then show you how the profile should look like. So, let me just draw that for you. The C naught is still flat and uh, composition is here. And after some amount of uh, solidification, little bit. So, that will be the 1. So, which means that this value is f s and this value f s plus d f s. Okay. And uh, when the solidification has gone from f s to d f s that is 20 to 21 percent let us say how much has the uh, increase of the solute concentrations has happened. So, which means that gone from here to here and this increase in the concentration of the solid can be thought of as d c s. So, that this composition is c s and this increase in the solid liquid composition can be seen as d c l. So, that rest of it is c l. And these expressions will still be uh, valid, the definition of partition coefficient and all those things are valid. Now, uh, we then perform solute balance, which is basically to conserve the amount of solute that is there. And solute balance should then be written in such a way that the area under the blue curve is equal to the area under the red curve. Okay. So, that is what is solute balance implies. the area under the red and the blue plots is same okay that's when the solute conserv conservation has taken place so let us then write expressions that would make that uh, conservation possible and then we would uh, write that expression uh, here so that we can make the derivation okay let me erase this part and then show you how that expression look like so the area under the blue curve can be written as uh, two rectangles this rectangle would then be c s into f s. So, it would be c s f s plus the rest of it is basically c l into 1 minus f s. This is the area under the blue and the area under the red is going to be having the height slightly more and that would be written as C s plus D C s that is a slightly increased composition and that has solidified up to F plus D F s plus the area under the red curve here would be having the height slightly increased. So, C l plus D C l into the length has actually shrunk a little bit and that can be written as 1 minus F s minus D F s. Okay. So, these two areas being same implies that when you multiply with the uniform cross sectional area then you are actually solute balance is being applied. Okay. So, we would then expand only the right hand side because 
we can see some cancellation that is possible. So, we would then take only these terms and see. So, C s into F s plus F s into D C s plus C s into D F s plus D C s into D F s and then this again we will write it as the C l into I intentionally keep 1 minus F s together so that I can cancel it later on okay and then plus D C l into 1 minus F s minus C l into D F s minus D C l into D F s okay. Now, in this expression we can note that we can start cancelling out the terms and then I will highlight them. So, this is same as here okay. So, that can be cancelled and this is same as this that can be cancelled and then you can also see some more things can be neglected. So, usually these double differentials are extremely small numbers because both are supposed to be small. So, I would then uh, neglect those second order effects. So, those can also be dropped. So, which means that you can now uh, write this balance with only the remaining four terms which can be collated. So, I will just bring them across and see how they look like. Okay. So, this implies okay. So, 0 is equal to so F s D C s C s D F s plus D C l into 1 minus F s minus C l into D F s. Now, what we need to do is basically identify the terms that have the same differential and bring them together. So, they have the D F s as common. So, we just bring it to the right hand side. So, we write it as C l minus C s into D F s is equal to on the right hand left hand side you have the D C s and D C l that are together. So, we could uh, use the uh, definition of partition coefficient to write saying that implies D C s is equal to k into D C l. Okay, we can use it so that we can uh, change it. So, it can be written as F s plus D C l is D C s by k. So, okay. so, this is the expression that we have now arrived. Okay. So, now you could then uh, make this a little bit more simple by using the same expression. So, you can already see that C s by C l is k which means that this can be simplified. So, this can be written as C s by k okay, which means that I can take the C s out. So, I can write like that and here also I can make a simplification and that I would do by multiplying. So, I would take the k fully down and I put a k there and then I can take the f s common. So, that would be 1 minus 1 minus k. Okay. So, this is how it is written and now you can see that both sides have a denominator k. So, I can ignore that. And uh, you can see that when you want to integrate, you normally should have the same variable along with the differential and so which means that the square bracket should be brought down here. This can be taken to the other side there. So, we will do that manipulation now, so that we can integrate. So, let us just manipulate this. So, d f s by 1 minus 1 minus k f s and 1 minus k I would just still keep that here is equal to d c s by c s. Okay. So, now if, uh, you could see that uh, you have the same variables nicely grouped. So, we could integrate these and we could start from f s is equal to 0 
to f s is equal to f s and at f s is equal to 0 the solid composition is given by k c naught and at f s is equal to f s the solid composition uh, is uh, given by the c s. Okay. So, which means that we can now integrate and substitute these limits and see how the expression is going to look like and therefore, you can see that it comes as a logarithm and uh, let us just uh, substitute that uh, it implies 1 minus k logarithm and there is a minus sign here. Okay. So, which means that I can swap the uh, integral signs and therefore, 0 should be the first limit and therefore, it will be coming as 1 0 here and then f s will be the second limit 1 minus 1 minus k f s is equal to log the first limit is still here it is log c s first limit is c s second limit is k c naught. And you can see that the 1 minus k has been here it should be absorbed. So, you remove that fellow here because it is supposed to be 1 minus k. Uh, as the multiplicative factor here. So, which means that if you exponentiate both you start seeing how the expression look like and we would do that now. So, which means that you would see that C s is equal to k c naught divided by 1 minus 1 minus k f s and C s by k is nothing but C L okay. so, which means that I can write it as C L is equal to C naught by this. So, this is an expression which tells you how C L is related by F S. You can also call it as C naught C S related by F S because you can write it as K C naught by 1 minus 1 minus K F S etcetera. And uh, this relationship the way we have written is looking like a function as you vary the liquid fraction how the concentration of the liquid is changing etcetera. Now, in this form it may not be recognizable immediately what it is, but we would just simply manipulate a little bit and show you what it means. So, what does balance of solute mean is being demonstrated. So, what we would do is that we would just uh, take this expression and uh, manipulate. So, you would have the expression C L into 1 minus 1 minus k f s equal to c naught. So, I will write it as c l minus 1 minus k c l minus k c l into f s is equal to c naught. k c l is again c s. So, you write it as c s. So, then you can take the c naught there. So, you write it as c l minus c naught is equal to c l minus c s into f s. It implies that f s is equal to c l minus c naught divided by c l minus c s. Now, is this uh, then clear what it is? For you to recognize this I would just quickly draw the phase diagram and show you what we meant. at a given fraction if this was C L and this was C S and this is C naught then what we have written is C L minus C naught that is this distance divided by the total distance river rule. Okay. So, lever rule is nothing but balance of solute okay, under the assumption that you have got complete mixing in the liquid and in the solid region. So, there is absolutely no uh, uh, no special uh, uh, phenomenon behind this equation lever rule it is actually giving you the function of the liquid composition as a function of the uh, solid fraction or liquid fraction and under the situation that it is fully mixed in both solid and liquid you you retrieve the lever rule. Okay. So, this is one, one thing that we can bring from the relationships that we have drawn okay. and uh, when is it applicable whenever the uh, 
complete miscibility is there in the liquid which is generally not possible in a fast process such as welding that is the reason why lever rule is not applicable uh, most of the time to understand what would be the uh, composition variations that are happening at micro scale. And we now see that it is originated because of the assumptions that we started off. So, we can now modify this equation to relax at least one of those assumptions and the first assumption that we would like to relax is the uh, composition uh, equi equilibration within the solid because solid normally has very poor um, this diffusivity. So, you can reduce the amount of uh, uh, mixing in the solid by simply setting it to 0 and then looking at it. Okay. So, we would just take a you know, short break and we will come back uh, to this derivation and see how this equation would change if you make that relaxation. So, let us get started uh, back from the previous part on the second part of the solute transfer modeling which is applicable for the uh, micro scale uh, redistribution of solute uh, because of the uh, solidification of the fusion weldment. So, here we have uh, seen that in the previous uh, part we have derived essentially a lever rule by assuming complete mixing in the solid and liquid regions and uh, we have seen that it is applicable only when we have got uh, a very close by uh, conditions for equilibrium to be set and for a fast process such as welding it may not be applicable. And we will relax one of the conditions to make it a bit closer to the reality by saying that we will use complete mixing in the liquid, but no mixing at all in the solid which means that you would have a situation of variation in the composition as follows. So, schematically the way we have drawn earlier we would do the same thing here. So, this is nothing but the distance r the f s and uh, what would happen is that initially we are saying the composition is taken as some c naught and uh, because of a small amount of solid that would form the initial composition can be k c naught and uh, the plot would look like that because this much of solute has to be then distributed in the liquid and the next delta of solidification would intend that it should be like that and then further on it should go like that. Okay. Unlike, unlike in the previous section where we said that the entire solid is also having full mixing so that the composition is made as flat, in this case we will not do that. We will say that there is no diffusion in the solid which means that the profile of composition variation in the solid will just stay frozen as we have given. So, a step by step profile like this if you take the middle points would show that it is actually an increasing plot. So, we can then redraw this profile by making it smooth as follows. So, if this was the case C naught C as a function of distance then the profile would look like this, this is K C naught okay. and uh, what we are trying to then balance is when the liquid fraction is going from uh, f s to f s plus d f s and uh, let us then draw them like this. Okay. This is f s plus d f s okay. and the composition has gone from C s to C s plus d C s, C l to C l plus d C l by a small change in the solid fraction that has solidified and the solid composition is not getting equilibrated it is some arbitrary curve that is dependent upon the process conditions. So, we will not bother about the nature of that curve to do the solid balance. The solid balance requires that the area under the white line and the blue line should be equal and we see that some of them are constant okay, common to both. So, this area is common to both and this area is common to both. So, which means that we can actually look at only two regions and then make them equal and I am shading them here. Because of the solidification happening by making the solid fraction go from F s to F s plus D F s, it has changed only this much that means that if this hatched region is equal to that hatched region then the solute balance is maintained. And while maintaining that we will also see a lesson from the previous uh, uh, class that the uh, product of D F S and D C S are negligible. So, this corner which is basically uh, like a triangle is can be you know, neglected uh, because F S and D F S and D C S are very small. So, we would just uh, pretend that these two are 
essentially rectangles and look at their balance. So, solute balance would require this. So, the vertical rectangle this part is basically the width is d f s and the height is nothing but the liquid composition minus solid composition which is C s minus C l that is the area okay. and uh, the horizontal rectangle here would then uh, have the width which is nothing but 1 minus f s minus d f s. into the height, height is nothing but DCL. Okay, again we see that DFS and DCL are getting multiplied here, we can ignore that. So, we could write this simply like this, DFS into, this is uh, the height difference is CL minus CS. because you are approximating the double differential products as negligible. And we can then bring the quantities on either sides to see how they express uh, themselves. So, so, you could write it as d f s by 1 minus f s is equal to d c l by c l minus c s. Okay. And we can also see that c l minus c s can be made as uh, a function of C L itself. So, you could uh, uh, take C S as K C L okay. and if you take the C L as common. So, you could write it as C L into 1 minus k and that 1 minus k can be absorbed here. Okay. So, you have that equation. Okay. This has to be then integrated to see how the variation of C L with F S is going to be. So, you would then put that integrals and initial condition you can say at f s is equal to 0, what would be the C l is equal to C naught and when f s is equal to f s, C l is equal to C l. Okay. So, you can then immediately see that you can integrate and uh, it would look like this 1 minus k into log 1 minus f s okay, and the integral signs have to be swapped, the 0 will be here and f s will be down because of the minus sign here and is equal to the next sign will be log and C l, the top will be C l, bottom will be C naught. So, which means that 1 minus k into log 1 by 1 minus f s is equal to log C l by C naught. Okay. So, which means that you can take this as an exponent here. So, log 1 by 1 minus f s raised to the power of 1 minus k is equal to C l minus C naught. Then you can exponentiate both sides to remove the log and then you can bring the C naught here. So, that you can see that the expression is given as C l is equal to C naught by 1 minus f s raised to the power of 1 minus k. So, this expression I will just write it again C l is equal to C naught by 1 minus f s raised to the power of 1 minus k. This expression goes by the name Shine's equation. So, it is different from the Lever's rule where you do not have the exponentiation, Child's equation you have an exponentiation and you can see that for uh, values that are of partition coefficient like 0.14, then basically this is a positive power and 1 minus f s would mean that the liquid composition is rapidly rising above C naught as the solidification is coming to a end. Okay. And how we can apply the Child's equation to derive the uh, eutectic fraction? when you have for example, towards the end of the solidification, even though you are not expecting eutectic to form for the alloy composition that you have chosen that can be used. Okay. And the way you uh, do it to uh, find out is just substitute 
for uh, Cl, the eutectic composition and find out what would the Fl. Okay. So, we could do that very simply here, I would just illustrate here. If C eutectic was known, then you can C naught and what was supposed to be find, found out is eutectic fraction which is the liquid fraction, this is Fs is solid. So, you can say F eutectic is nothing but Fl raised to the power of 1 minus k. So, you have the initial composition, you have the eutectic composition, you have the partition coefficient. So, find this and then you get what would be the eutectic fraction remaining uh, during welding in case the welding is happening under the regime where the Siles equation is applicable, okay, which is actually uh, quite uh, reasonable to expect. And uh, you would see that you would get a reasonable value for eutectic fraction even though the phase diagram does not uh, give you the eutectic at all. And it is also known in the experiments that uh, for alloys compositions which are slightly you know uh, ahead of uh, the limit, solid solution limit, I would just draw them here. So, for compositions like this, you do not expect any eutectic to form, but then if it were in a welding situation, you would have eutectic to form and uh, normally equilibrium predicts that only these kind of a uh, compositions will have eutectic and these should not have, but then you would see that eutectic can be observed even for such alloys and how much it will be observed can be given by the Shiles equation. We can actually see uh, the behavior of Shiles equation through couple of exercises in the tutorial that I would be uh, putting up in the course website and uh, with that I will close the second part of the uh, micro scale solute transfer uh, uh, at this uh, juncture. And uh, in the next lesson we will see how we can actually relax one more condition that we have set here namely the fully mixed region in the liquid. We can relax even that and then see how the solute segregation uh, can uh, help us in understanding how the solute uh, uh, distribution will be happening at micro scale and also how it will affect the microstructure. Okay, so, with that uh, we will close this lesson. Thank you.